What's up guys? Welcome back to Diving Garage. AC not working, blowing hot air, but it worked yesterday. Well, today I'm gonna to show you some troubleshooting tips to hopefully get that cool air back. Let's dive in. All right, so of course, right as I'm going to film this, it started raining, so <laughs> we're gonna make the best of it. First thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna pop the hood on Bruce and see what we're working with. All right, so step one of any good troubleshooting, check is it plugged in, all right? So a few things I want you to check. First of all, we'll start right here, right up front. So right here, I'm looking at the high pressure side. Back there is the low pressure side. We're gonna check out some fuses and switches down here. And on a Camaro, the uh, compressor is down there. This process really applies to any car with AC. The, the mechanics and, and the processes are the same. So first thing I want you to do, start looking at your high, high pressure side. And look at the connector. So you see, it looks nice connected. Make sure it's snug in there. And then you're gonna to wanna to go over to your compressor. You look right there. So if we're looking straight down, you see that gray, that gray tab? That's your connector. So what I want you to do is grab yourself a pick or something, unplug it, shoot some WD-40 in there, and plug it back in. Over here on the passenger side, another thing you're gonna to wanna to check is if you go in just like this, you have to come down here, probably lay it upside down, and you'll find this. This is your EVAT temperature sensor. And what you wanna do is uh, unplug it, plug it back in, kind of the same as everything else. This is something that is pretty common failure. This part is about $20. So if you wanna just rule something out, go ahead and change it. Uh, but otherwise, just unplug it, plug it back in. And just so that we know we got a good solid connection. Uh, this is pretty tough to get to. Um, I'm fully upside down right now. <laughs> and all the blood is going to my head, so I need to get out of here. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna see if the compressor kicks on. All right, so down on your control panel here, make sure that you got the AC compressor activated. Uh, you don't need the recirculating air. As long as this one is on, you're good to go. Uh, it might be a different label in your car, it might be actually AC, it might have this little snowflake, it depends on what it is. So what you wanna do is make sure that's on, turn your air up or your fan speed up, I don't know, halfway. That's good. Now let's go to the front of the engine and make sure it's on. All right, so that down there is our compressor. And you can see how it's spinning. That means it's good to go. And we got good power. Everything is groovy. So now we know the fuses and relays are good. But what if they're not? So I'm going to show you what, might, what yours may look like. If you know you got your inside uh, button engaged, but maybe it's not powering on out here. So what you want to do is open up your fuse box, find out which one corresponds to your AC clutch. In this case, it's this one here on this Camaro. But just check out your um, labeling diagram there. It's all pretty easy to read. Um, what we're going to do, since I know it's this one, keep your eye on that, and I'm going to pull the relay. There we go. See how it stopped? What we do is we interrupted the circuit, right? So let's say you're in this situation where the relay is plugged in, but you got nothing. So what you want to do is look at the relay that that you know, your clutch controls your clutch. Check out the number. You want to find one of the same exact type in your box. In this case, it's this one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to yank this and put it there. But we're going to see what the heck does this go to, right? So this one is K627. And K627 is the headlights. So we're good to go. So let me go ahead and yank this out. We're going to lose our headlights. That's OK. And we're going to put this just like that. Boom, there you go. So what we've done here is we've verified that we have good power going through the harness, to the clutch, and the clutch does work. So those are a few things you need to make sure you nail right away. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and switch these back to where they're supposed to be. All right, so if you keep looking at the, di the diagram, and this, you can't really see it on camera, but there's one that says AC clutch 10 amp, and it's a mini fuse, and it's number one. So it's the one right here next to it, which is this 10 amp here. This 10 amp right here. So what you can also do is you can do the same process. Pull this 10 amp, find another 10 amp, swap it over, make sure you're getting good power. If your clutch still didn't kick on. All right, so once we've passed that step, now that we know we got power going to the clutch, the clutch is spinning, and we can go inside and make sure how it feels. 
All right, now we're back inside. Just gonna make sure we got this on max air. We got fan speed on, and you can't feel it, but it feels actually nice and cool. But what if it doesn't? What if yours doesn't feel like that? Well, let's go check the charge. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the charge. You're gonna need one of these little gauges here. You can get them from any of the parts stores. Uh, pretty common, pretty cheap to get. Uh, good investment, because then not only can you check your cars, you can check other people's cars too and help your friends out. So quick, quick side note on the uh, system charge. If the charge is too low, compressor won't kick on. But if the charge is too high, it also won't kick on. So if you go starting to fill your system and you just keep jamming that refrigerant in there thinking that's gonna fix it, not the case guys, sorry. So let's see where this goes. On this Camaro, we'll follow this line that's nice and frosty. And this little cap right here is covering the low side service port. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that off. We're gonna take that off. Oh gosh, it's tight. Hold on. Okay. We're gonna take it off. And we're gonna set it up here so we don't lose it. All right, and then go ahead and grab your gauge. And if you look in there, it's a pretty small, if you can see in there, it's a pretty small opening and it's only gonna fit your low side. If you try and take this and put it on your high side, it's not gonna fit. So it only goes on one. If it's not fitting, that means you're at the wrong place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the uh, little collet here. I'm gonna pull it back and press it on there at the same time. There you go, a nice connection there. And then we're just gonna kind of twist this up so we can see what's going on here. So right now you'll see that I'm in the yellow, but the car's off, I'll turn the car off. So let's go turn it on and see where we're at. All right, I got the car on, boom. Look at that, right in the green. So um, if you got one of these little gauges, you can just follow that. If it's in the green, you're good to go. If it's in the yellow, a little too high, red, your system probably won't work. It might work in the yellow region, but definitely not the red. Like I said, if it's overpressured, uh, you're gonna, freaking me honest. If it's overpressured, it's still not gonna work. Well, how do you check if it's overpressured? I put up a short a little while ago using uh, gauges how to check your low and high side. Um, and those gauges you can rent from your local auto parts store for free, basically, which means you put up the money, use it, and if you return it, you get your money back, right? So don't let anybody scam you thinking that it's just straight up free. You gotta put up the money first. Um, but all you do is you connect your low side just like we did, connect your high side like uh, like we didn't do but it's just right here and then you read the gauges right and what are those values supposed to be i'm going to put some text somewhere right here but the value should be at a normal temperature uh, outside if it's super high the values going to be different so try and check it somewhere around 70 80 degrees something like that one more thing i want to talk about too is i said if it's too high it's not going to work right well if this this is your high side sensor if this sensor is dead, then it's not going to send the right value to the computer, which controls this whole system. And then it's going to make it seem like your compressor is dead or something else is dead. So how do you check that? Well, again, if you got some gauges, you can see what's going on in the connector here. So you know the values. It's raining. It's raining hard now. Run! All right, y'all, it started raining pretty good. I retreated back to the garage. Um, but if you check those things and your system still isn't working, then unfortunately you might have some problems. Um, it could be a compressor is out. It could be that the charge is so out of whack that you need to take it into a shop so they can recover all the Freon and draw a vacuum on the system, make sure there's no leaks, make sure everything works, and then they can recharge it properly to get all the levels back in shape. All right, cut a gap in the rain. So what to do if your gauge reads low so if you, you got your car on you got to connect it and it's down here or somewhere in this white zone what to do well get yourself a can of the proper refrigerant and this is our 134a we're working with and you get the same connector hook it up to your low side and then while the car is running you got your gauge on there you start to do one of these you hold that trigger and you get rock it upside down right side up just like that do that for a little bit and then check let it run for a little bit and once you see that needle cross right into the green, stop. Don't be going all crazy trying to get the icest cold air you possibly can. Just wait, give it a day, let it kind of situate itself and normalize. And then check it again. I mean, you got this gauge now, so you can check it whenever you want. And if it's still low, then add some more. All right, guys, so if you checked all of those things and you still can't get the compressor to kick on, but you know you got power and you know everything else is right, 
then unfortunately you might have a bad clutch or the compressor is bad unfortunately to say but the good thing is on these camaros they're pretty easy to change it's pretty easy to get to i think it's just three bolts and obviously the connector and then the lines and then you're in there i hope this video helped you out and if you liked the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button get out there and dive your next project catch you next time